Good afternoon, Judge. Good afternoon, Your Honor. All right, this is case 240776LT, Lennox Property Management versus Meyer Triplett. Uh, appearance of the record. Carrie Zanin, P67390, on behalf of plaintiff. Maya Triplett. Okay. So, uh, I think in the file, I do have a rent property non compliance proof of escrow letter from Jack McIntyre. Uh, did you receive this, Ms. Zanin? I did not, Your Honor. So I have it here in the file. It's dated May 1st. Um, it says SK Pontiac Delaware failed to obtain certificate of compliance, suspension of a certificate of compliance, and or failure to register rental property within the city of Pontiac. This letter is to serve as proof that the, the attendant above has set up and paid into an escrow account under the ordinance within the city treasurer's office on March 4th, 2024. Agree, Judge, but if you recall the last time she was supposed to provide proof that she's paid it multiple times, not just the one time. So it's not just and and I would argue and judge, I, I made the arguments obviously last time under the motion, but I would argue under the ordinance under paragraph N that says this subsection does not apply to a tenant where the owner established that the conditions uh, which constitute health and safety were caused by the same tenant, by this tenant. I would not say that, I would not argue that the um, health and safety of the um, issues were caused by the tenant. However, I spoke with the um, head of maintenance for Lennox property, and he has indicated to me that Miss Triplett on multiple occasions when uh, maintenance was to come and get the work done for the certificate of compliance, Miss Triplett would not let them do the work, would cancel the appointments and or would send them away. So That's I would argue true. that she's part of the problem, why the certificate of compliance is not in place with the city. And I would ask that you grant my judgment. At this point, I owe, show that $7,600 is what's due plus court costs of 173, a total of $7,773. Now granted judge, I'm not, denying that she made one payment towards the escrow with the city, which was would encompass $900. If you want to abate her rent by the $900, I'm okay with that. Your Honor, can I say something, please? Just one second. I do see a receipt saying $900. Um, and obviously that's way less than the uh, $7,000 that's owed. Um, Yes, okay, so your honor, she's saying that the head of maintenance said that I'm not letting them in. That is a total story. Anytime that maintenance has come to my house because they just came like two, maybe I'll say possibly two weeks ago. He came and he did the paint. He painted, did some painting on the back of the house. He told me that he would come. He would be back. The next day to put my screens in, he said he had to go home and make them. He said he took my measurements and everything. I've never denied maintenance, not one time. I have the text messages that shows that maintenance um told me when they were coming. The only time like the guy came and I was literally on my way to work, they told me and I have the text message that it's all outside work that they have to take care of so I don't have to be there. They have not came back to take care of anything else. Like this whole right. process. I understand, Mr. It just seems like they don't want you as a tenant. So uh, if if I grant or if I grant the motion, uh, how long does she have, Ms. Uh, Zan, to, to can you legally give her? Judge, well, the law, the law would give her to the 14th. If she needs additional time, I'm serious. Right we now. can give her to the, the 25th to vacate, Judge. Your Honor, I have nowhere to go. This whole situation 
has been going on since March. Lennox property has been aware of every single thing. When I put my rent in escrow every month, they get a copy of that. Your Honor, they do. They get a copy of it. It gets sent so, out to so, them. Hold on, let me ask you this. So when they return it back, do you set that money aside so that way they say, well, you owe 7000 you like, well, here it is right here. I have money set aside, but I also have things that I, you know, have to take care of. For the simple fact, I shouldn't even have, be having to deal with this. They're not even supposed to be contacting me. The, it legally says, with my rent being in escrow, they have gotten easily... They they have wrote them easily three tickets as far as harassment. They are not supposed to be contacting me whatsoever. The only time that they really are supposed to reach out to me is about maintenance. And the maintenance man is the one who contacts me. Then this property is not supposed to be bothering me until all of this stuff is done. I, I came down, I dropped off the paper that shows all three, all three um paper that needs to be fixed right. on my house. Right. The issue is though. The back money, you know, if they if they fix this, they're still entitled to it. Now the payment of nine hundred dollars. With, with the ordinance, with the with the way that the ordinance works in the city of Pontiac escrow works, they're not they're not entitled to that because they have not completed what they were supposed to be doing in that thirty days. That's why the money gets returned to me. Because they're not in compliance. It's not, it's nothing on my end, Your Honor. This is all on their end. They're not taking care of what they're supposed to be doing. They literally got this same paper. This this was done on March 7th. They literally so, have so had let me ask, let me, let me just say this. All right. Is there a certificate of occupancy? Have have we what's going on with that new Is there a certificate of occupancy? Judge, like, what's going on is every, all the work has been done and um, not, we need Excuse me, ma'am. I didn't interrupt second, you, please, Miss Triplett. I didn't interrupt you. Don't interrupt me, please. I um, I spoke with maintenance this afternoon. All of the work has been done. The final inspection needs to be set, and then it'll be in compliance, Judge. However, again, she has given the city nine hundred dollars, and I have given the city nine hundred dollars every month since Judge, March. Miss Triplett, I've not. I never interrupted you. Can I you apologize. please? Now, this is twice I've asked you not to interrupt me. Please don't do that. Um, Judge, I would make the same argument. There's been multiple times that maintenance has tried to go out, that they were not refused to get inside. I, yeah. Even under the ordinance that Miss Triplett wants to push through, it says if she's part of the problem, that the ordinance does not apply. I would ask that you grant my motion. Again, I don't have a problem if you want to abate Nine hundred dollars is that's what she's given the city in total. I'm okay with that, and I, I'm also okay with a rich issue date of October twenty fifth, Your Honor. Your Honor, this is uh, not fair to me. Okay, give me one second. I mean, they're saying you. So on one end we got here's a dilemma. On one end we got. Um, landlords who are not in compliance with the laws and then they're saying they can't be in compliance because you're preventing them from being in compliance. Your Honor, I have and never... Have, hold, on, hold, on, hold on one second. Hold on one second. One second. And then we have you saying that you've been in compliance and that um, you have not stopped them from inspecting. And the court is stuck okay. in the middle of the mess to try to figure out something that's fair and reasonable to both sides because there's arguments on both sides. Which you have an argument too, Mr. Strickland. You do. You know, I don't know if they're entitled to the whole seven thousand dollars. To be honest with you, um, I don't see how they can be entitled to it if they're not in uh, in, in accordance with the law as far as being certified. That's not Mr. Strickland's problem. She is not the landlord. I'm not going to impute that on her. Um, so what does the seven thousand dollar period cover? Is that entire period where the landlords have not been in compliance with the laws of this city? Judge, yes, Your Honor. It, judge, I don't. I think the question was for me, Miss Triplett, not you. Well, um, I, it, that's the answer, though. Miss Triplett, Miss Triplett, Miss Triplett, Miss Triplett. I'm Triplett. sorry, Your. Relax. Sit down. I'm at work, and it, it's because I'm at work. Miss Triplett, Miss Triplett. Ms. Tripley, 
Just listen. I'm listening. Judge, the rent is from March through October's rent. That is what's due in Owing. And even Ms. Triplett said earlier today that she's made three payments to the city, but the same 900 because they've given it back to her. Your Honor, I never said that I made three payments. I've been making my payments since March. I literally just brought down my September rent receipt and the paper that shows why I got my August rent back. This has been going on since. So, so, so my, my issue is I don't have receipts from Mark saying you made payments down there. I mean, I have a letter here saying, saying that I set up, so you paid in March. Okay, let's try it. You paid in March. It started in March. Huh? Yeah. The escrow so started in March. So I have a letter saying at least you paid in March. And then from now March, have... from March until September, because I have to, you have to make an appointment to put your rent in escrow. Tomorrow morning, I'm going to go pay my October rent. The there's no way that I can keep putting my rent in escrow if I miss a payment. So she said that I paid in March and I have not paid since then. That is a total lie. I pay my rent into escrow every month if i didn't pay my rent into escrow we wouldn't even be here right now because it wouldn't so, even be an issue. they would have kicked me out of the escrow thing and i would have been having to pay my rent regular my rent is deposited into the city of pontiac escrow every month when we went in front of I judge I understand. I understand i understand and the one thing i asked for if people just do what i asked for them things will go very smooth there is no government entity that can accept money without a paper trail. If there is, they're going to be like Eric Adams, the federal government, the DOJ will be on them. They have to accept money. They have to process the money. There's a paper trail. I, all I've asked for was the paper trail from March to now. And if I see you've done that, then the only argument the landlord has, which is a question, the fact, maybe whatever, that you stop them from being in the certificate, having the certificates of compliance. But I can't even get to that argument because you have not provided me with April, May, June, July, and the court is not going to call over there and do the work. The well, you, I dropped the paperwork That's that you had. I, I dropped out the paperwork that I thought you had wanted me to bring in, and then the reason I only I can bring I can bring you I can drop off the from literally from showing from March until, but when we went in front of Judge Waters last month and the escrow lady was there as well, he provided that information to let Judge Waters know that yes, my rent is in escrow, it's been in escrow since March and I am making my monthly payments. Judge, I recall that last time we were here a week ago, you asked her to supply confirmation that it was put in with the city every single month, not just that first month. That's what I, I said, recall. I, said, I wrote down, the defendant has made city escrow payments since March 2024. However, city has been returning payments after 30 days because repairs had not been made. The defendant may be entitled to rent abatement because the plaintiff's failure to make time repairs. The defendant to present proof making payments and the city returning the payments, uh, February rent, February 24 rent is not in dispute. We got March, we're good on March. We're good on uh, whatever the nine hundred dollars is for. Um, I see uh, September, right? Her rent is nine hundred dollars. Is that correct? Yes, sir. So yes, and I've September. Been in between, I've been so, paying since March. Like they won't let me. They wouldn't even let me make a payment in September if my rent was not caught up. You see, when I, if I hadn't been putting my rent in escrow since March. September, they would have not let me allow me to put my rent in escrow because it would have right, been Ms. It's fine, Miss Triplett. Yes, Your Honor. This is the last. This is the last strike. You got three weeks to come in and show proof of April through August. If you do, I'm inclined to abate the entire rent for you, but only on the condition that they're able to get their inspection and their certificate of compliance within a certain amount of days. That means there's no prevention 
There's none of that from them trying to get their certificate of compliance. And then after that, moving forward, they're in compliance. You don't pay your rent. Yes, Your Honor. You understand what I'm saying? I understand. Um, I have a question. Did you did you receive the rental inspection paper um that I dropped off as well? It should be three pages. I, I brought that and then I brought the September um thing and then I brought the paper that showed my August as to why my August rent was returned to me um in September. But it's all I got is the escrow. All I got is the escrow paperwork. Okay, I'm gonna um Judge, I'm gonna can bring, I excuse me, please. I'm gonna bring um down because I'm getting ready to go put my rent in escrow in the morning. So I'll bring a copy of that and then I'll get all of my receipts um stating from March and then I'll actually I'll also include my October one. And I'm also going to bring down the copy of the rental inspection that was done on March 7th. There's three pages of stuff that needs to be done, including okay. inside and outside. So I'll also bring that too, if that's okay. Judge, I'm, I've got two things to say really quick, Judge. I have asked Ms. Triplett to send to my office whatever information, like she's supposed to, to my office, I even documentation. To Hold on, Ms. Triplett, Ms. Triplett, Ms. Triplett, because I know if you Behalf of the plaintiff. Mr. Reynolds, good afternoon. State your name for the record. Thomas Edward Reynolds. All right, so you filed a motion to stay set aside the judgment. Your Honor, possession. This is a uh, termination of tenancy matter. Um, I refer the court to 4.201M that deals with post-judgment motions and it requires an escrow deposit of one month's rent to stay the writ. I don't believe a deposit has been made. All right, you said you were given the wrong. 
Reynolds, you weren't given the wrong Zoom number on that date. You got the correct Zoom number. No, what happened was, Your Honor, was that I had lost my Zoom um, instructions. I called the courthouse for the Zoom number to the room. They gave me one, but it was had me sitting where it said uh, eviction court or whatnot, rental eviction court. So I kept getting bumped out, and I didn't understand what was going on. Then I didn't know on this app, because I'm not familiar with Zoom app, it had a chat in the corner, and it, and it said, you're in the wrong room. You need to. But by the time I got in the right room, it was like 3-something or 3.30. And I called the courthouse. It's all kind of like, you know, documented. So it was, that's what happened. How I ended up uh, sitting in the wrong room. I got the number for that room number they gave me for the Zoom room. So what happened down at Google? Beg your pardon? What happened down at Google? You're breaking up. You said what happened to what? I was wondering what happened in front of Judge Gobal. Mr. Hoopty, can you spread some light on that? Shed some light on yes. that? Yeah, Mr. Judge Gobal, uh, as you know, Judge is very busy, and I probably was still in the courtroom at that time. Um, he entered a default judgment. Uh, Mr. Reynolds certainly knew uh, enough to have the phone number for the court and call about the number. He did get a chat that said he was in the wrong room. Um, you know, he's had it. Yeah, I didn't know I was in the wrong room until I, I saw that chat up there. I kept getting bounced out and I kept going back in. I got that Zoom number they gave me. But then when he finally said, you need Judge Bowie's Zoom number, by the time I called back to the courthouse and got the exact right number, and this is all my fault because I lost the paper for my Zoom instructor. But I'm saying, when I called back and then I said, no, the chat in the message, chat message, it said, no, you need Judge Bowie's thing because I right. wish I could have screamed that. But by the time I got the correct number, it was in your room. It was like 3.30. But I was on Zoom holding in a room I kept getting bumped out of and didn't realize what was going on. And then, like I said, that was my fault because I lost my instructions. But when I called down there, they gave me the wrong Zoom number. But I thought I was in the right room because it kept showing right, up. Mr. Well, yeah. So we'll set a certain it looks like we've had well, four or five hearings on this case already, Judge. This is uh, right, not but... five hearings. And he's been given the proper Zoom numbers at every single time. Okay. And has okay. been told where to appear. This appears to be a deliberate attempt to delay the inevitable. This is no, a it was not. tendency. To I can prove the property. Mr. Reynolds. Mr. Reynolds. Mr. Reynolds. Yes, There's going to be one person talking at a time. Or are you are you gonna have to come in the court? It's not a shouting match. I'm not one at, one person at a time. Be quiet, Mr. Reynolds. I'll give you more. I'll give you time to talk. Yes, sir. Uh, sorry, Your Honor. Sorry, to continue you. uh, again, the court rules require posting of mm -hmm. one month's rent to stay. The issuance of the rent, no rent was posted. There have been multiple hearings in this case. At each hearing, he's been given the appropriate Zoom ID number. It looks like it's a deliberate attempt to stall the inevitable. All right, so uh, the motion to stay the proceeding is denied. Thank you, Your Honor. All right, we're all set. Thank you. Thank you, Judge. I believe I may have one more case, too. Uh, so what's going on with my cases? What I'm trying to understand. The motion that you filed to set aside the default is denied. So what's that mean? Because I was in uh, my court date got all messed up with the Zoom room and everything. So what's what's going on now? So when you say denied, I'm not going to get to proceed with my proceedings. Correct. This has been denied. Thank you. Have a good day, Mr. Reynolds. And, and for the record, the court did not mess up your court. No, I, said, I apologize for that. I said it was mostly my fault because I had lost my Zoom instruction. I called down there and I got the wrong Zoom number. It's all documented and that then, I was in the wrong room. And then, and then, Mr. Reynolds, 
to satisfy the law, you need to post a bond. I mean, you need to post it a month's rent. But that's not even possible. They didn't say that. They, didn't tell, they won't even accept my rent when I go up there to try to pay my rent. And really, I'm talking I'm, to the court. It was supposed to be posted to the court, Mr. Reynolds. It was supposed to be posted to the court. I never got to anything that told me to do that. Or I would have done that. Thank you, Honor. All right. You're all set, Mr. Reynolds. Thank you. All right. And then we have one more. Uh, Civil rock has not appeared with him.